Hi, and welcome to the tech demo of the Wiki Earth Climate Demonstration. I'm Christian Batista, and I'm sitting here with Benjamin Co. and we are the founders of Job Microsystems, which is the company that uh, has designed the Wiki Earth site so far. We were contracted by the Wiki Earth Society to design and build a small demonstration site that would show off some of the powers of an ontological database, and also to demonstrate uh, the power of collaboration on the web. Here's the result, which was used by student delegates who attended the World Student Environmental Summit in order to calculate their home university's dietary carbon footprint. Basically, what they did was enter what food they ate, where it was coming from, how much of their diet it represented, and what food group it was, and also whether it was in a solid or liquid state. And then from that, we did some carbon calculation. Let's begin with a look at the surface of the site. The content management system that we're using here is called Drupal, and it's an open source CMS that we were able to bang into shape to suit our purposes for the demo. Uh, you probably also noticed there's a Google map on the main page as well, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the data page. Off to the side on all the pages, there's a tree menu which can be used to view data from the ontology. Uh, one type of data point that we have in here is an academic institution, which if we click on that, we can see some results from there. Another type of data point is a food item, and if we click on that, we can see some results as well. Now, you should notice that the two types of data are styled differently, and that's one of the cool things about the system we're building, which is that, you know, in, in the ontology, there are some style, some style rules that we're coding in there. So when a user enters data of a certain type, you know, even if it's a numerical data uh, about food or something, they don't have to worry about making it pretty because the system is taking care of that already. Now, if we look over at the map, we can see a more intuitive way of visualizing those data points, which is to show where it's, dis where it's displayed in the world. Uh, and if you click on university, you'll see a little icon appear on the map where that university would be. And if you click on that icon, you can get some more information about it. Similarly, uh, clicking on diet items will let you visualize those. And you can either look at all of them or you can narrow it down to a, a few schools. And you can do that with a tree menu by selecting some schools and some diet items. If you do select the schools, we also provide you some connecting lines to show you which foods are being consumed at which schools. So that's all well and good, but let's take a look at how the data gets in there to begin with. We'll turn over to the upload page to do this. Uh, for the demo, the students were only able to put in diet items, but we're moving towards uh, slowly adding more abstractions so that all sorts of data can be added to the database. Uh, some interesting things to note on this page are the limits that are imposed on things like percentage of diet and location, which are all part of the ontology. These aren't hard-coded into the page, they're actually in the ontology themselves. So what we, we use is we use a PHP script which looks at each item in the ontology to see if it has any properties of the type restriction. And if it does find uh, restriction types, it will inform the user of this. You, know, you can see on the page that that's displayed. But we'll also perform a check uh, before any data is uploaded to the database. And if, if something violates those restrictions, then uh, that'll bounce back with an error message to the user so that they know what's going on. So let's enter a point here. Maybe let's put some sugar at the location of this year's conference, which is just outside Washington, D.C. So we'll put that info in, click upload, and we'll see that it's been added successfully. So now we can go over to the map and see that, yeah, the data has been added, and if we click on the icon, we can see that all the information that we provided is there. So the site gives us a rough idea about the carbon costs involved in transporting food, and you know you get that just from visually inspecting the map. Uh, but what's more useful is the application of a carbon cost algorithm that we can actually do through the engines page. If we take a look at that, we can see an outline of the formula that we use based on the amount of diesel fuel consumed to transport the food item, and also how much of the food item of the average student at a given university is consuming. What we uh, get is the result of CO2 emissions, kilograms of CO2. And one of the cool things about this calculation is that it's done on the fly, which means that any time new data is added, the calculation is updated so that what you see on the engines page is always up to date and the admins and the users don't have to do anything to make that happen. If we take a look at the map, we can visualize what's going on here, and we can do that selecting some universities and then selecting the transportation carbon cost. Uh, option down at the bottom. So we can see how much of a carbon footprint there is for each institution and if we click on it we can see that the institution is uh, listed and also how much CO2 in kilograms is being emitted. 
Um, some interesting findings that uh, we found that we weren't really expecting to find is that people who drink a lot of imported beer can really bump up their carbon footprint, and that's kind of a neat thing because we hadn't really anticipated that alcohol would be one of the main offenders in terms of uh, in terms of carbon emissions. But there you go. Uh, one you know one student had a very very locally sourced diet, except they had a fancy for German beer. And living on the west coast of Canada, this meant that this beer actually had to travel quite a long ways to get to their to their favorite watering hole and you know I don't think a lot of people consider the the, the carbon costs involved with things they consume at the bar but obviously we should based on this result Another thing that's kind of interesting is that if you look at a school that has an omnivorous diet, such as Murdoch, where they've got lots of meat and dairy and vegetables and everything that they're consuming, you can take a look at how local all their food sources can be, because obviously meats and things like that can be consumed from the same spot all year round. Whereas the more vegetarian diets, food's traveling a lot farther, and this could be because people require you know, a greater variety of exotic fruits and vegetables, and so these things have to be sourced uh, from overseas. And of course, as we'd expect, places like Sweden, where there's a really short growing season, obviously they're going to have a pretty high footprint uh, for, their, for their diets. Well, last but not least, uh, on the site here, we've got the search page, which searches through the data points in the ontology and looks through all their properties. So, for instance, if we're searching for something like University of Victoria, we see not only its entry as a university, but also any diet items that are being consumed there. Even though these are technically separate data points, because there's a link to the University of Victoria, you can also find the diet items uh, through that. Well, that's the tour. I hope you enjoyed it, and we think this highlights some of the power of collaboration on the semantic web. Even in a small problem like this one, we managed to find some things that we weren't necessarily looking for, and that really speaks volumes as to the applicability of this sort of technology for other environmental and social problems. I'd like to thank all the students who worked on uploading data to the site. I'd like to thank the World Student Environmental Summit organizers, and of course, uh, the Wikia Society for coming up with such an ambitious project to begin with. Bye for now.